you can learn the skill today and it becomes obsolete tomorrow. You can learn, you can be learning JavaScript today, meanwhile, cryptography is the next. So if you're the CEO, you can't spend a lot of time learning something. I think you're better off partnering with someone that's really, really good at that thing, is really, really passionate about it, and then let them do their work. And so I think for me, being resourceful is number one. The second thing would definitely be hire the smartest people you can find around you and then step out of their way. Hi, my name is Moses Henenwali, and this is my young CEO story. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, I went to school at University of Hertfordshire. Um, while I was there, I tried my hands in a few things. You know, we did an entertainment business. We did try to buy a restaurant, try to do a bunch of things. They didn't work out. I eventually decided to focus on my studies and finish school, just so I don't waste the school fees that my parents, my parents have spent. Um, but after that, I came back to Nigeria and I started working. I was doing management consulting, transfer pricing work. It was very, uh, let me just say it wasn't exciting for me. Um, and then at the same time, at that period in Nigeria, tech was just coming up at the time. You know, there was Jumia, Conga, all these people doing amazing things. And so one day I cold emailed the, from one of the founders of Jumia, Tunde Kende. He had left Jumia and started another company called Ace. So it was a tech logistics company. So I guess that was sort of like my introduction to logistics, sort of shipping and stuff. Um, I emailed him and told him, look, I'm, this is what I'm doing at EY. I would like to come work for you. He replied. We eventually had a meeting. We spoke for like three hours and then he gave me a job. So I was doing business development and sales at ACE. Um, and it was very challenging, but I learned a lot. That was basically my introduction uh, into startups and tech and this industry. Critical moment for me really was last year. In the, in the heat of the lockdowns, in COVID-19 lockdowns, um, I noticed that the demand for shipping was, was going up, it was skyrocketing. People were still um, placing orders, trying to ship stuff out of the country. People still wanted to import stuff. The demand was actually going up. And I was like, okay, well, this is something interesting. Let's look into this. Um, and that was basically how Topship was born. And we started and we said, look, let's go and find merchants who have this problem. People who want to either import stuff from out of the country into Nigeria or send their goods to their customers. And let's see how we can use tech to solve that problem. Initially, it was very difficult, but we noticed that with time, people started placing orders, the requests were going up. And so we're like, okay, there's a market here. You know, let's, let's push further, let's dive deeper. And so that was what we did. The most important skills that a CEO needs to have, first of all, you need to be extremely resourceful. And I say that because, look, nothing's going to go your way. Everything, you do your blueprints and then life happens, right? And it always happens, literally every single time, on every single thing. Uh, so the number one thing, I think, just learning how to be resourceful, because you can learn the skill today and it becomes obsolete tomorrow. You can learn, you can be learning JavaScript today, meanwhile, cryptography is next. So it's like, you, you can't really, if you're the CEO, you can't spend a lot of time learning something, I think you're better off partnering with someone that is really, really good at that thing, is really, really passionate about it, and then let them do their work. The second thing would definitely be hire the smartest people you can find around you and then step out of their way. Naturally, I like to be in control and micromanage and push, but I've learned to, if you have smart people on your team, you have to give them space. Let them think, let them think up with a problem, let them experiment. That's the only way you can get your advantage as a startup. So I think for me, those are the two most important things. I don't think there are any technical skills that I require me. I think being persevering, pushing beyond, and then get, that goes back to the whole deep conviction, having really believing in what you're doing. Um, so if you, if you can persevere, I think that's like literally it because there's no, there's no technical skill that ensures success against the marketplace. I don't think a CV can convince me to hire someone. I think people design their CVs. People even hire people to design CVs for them. So I actually don't really like looking at CVs. I like having conversations and having chats. I like working with people that I like, right? So I make my decision based on something that I heard. It's called the layover test, right? So someone meets all the technical criteria that they're supposed to meet. Then you have maybe three, three candidates that are vying for a role. Now you make your decision based on the layover test. The layover test is, who would you rather spend a two hour or three hour layover at an airport with? Who is more fun? Who, is, who are you more likely to get along with, right? Um, that's, that's how I make my decision. So it's like, 
it's not it's not just the technical stuff, but it's also the culture fit. Uh, does, how does a person think? Is the person a nice person? Is he kind? Or is he, um, you know, is he is he rude and mean and, and and conniving? Or is he kind and empathetic and actually and does he care? Um, is he curious? You know, is he resourceful? This, these things have nothing to do with where you went to school or what you got two one two two third class. Doesn't matter, right? Or even if you went to school at all, right? Um, so, so those like personal, interpersonal, uh, and again, it's more important now because again, the first 10 people you hire in a startup determine the culture of the startup because they will hire the next 50 and the next 100 people. We were building a culture of people that, you know, um, they're not exactly similar. Everyone is different in their own way, but we have those core values, you know, we're, we're curious, we're resourceful. We are we are kind. We're not we're not mean. We're not we're not trying to be. Um, you know, we're not, we're not creating a toxic environment. Being kind, understanding that life is challenging, and you know you have to be kind and reaching out to people. Um, so those are some of the things that we use bringing people in. Now staying in and, and managing the team internally is a cold, a completely different ball game. Um, Again, remember the nature of work has changed. You know, we have to be hybrid. Some days we work remotely, some days we work in an office. Um, so over communicating is very important. You know, communicating more than you normally would have if you were in the same office space is absolutely important. Because it's very it's very easy to have a member of your team that lives in Ibaja that you, know, you don't see and you just you forget that you have this guy on your pay your payroll. You know, so it's very important to communicate to people. Uh, one of the things that we do is we communicate very frequently and very openly. We share everything. You know, even if you're not, if you're a tech guy, we still tell you customer customer service challenges. So you have an idea of what's going on in the entire company. We don't segment it across department lines. We share everything because we're a small team. So, so first of all, we're not a logistics company. We're a shipping platform. That's very, very, very important. There's a clear dis distinction. We partner with logistics companies, DHL, FedEx, UPS, Korea Plus, Ace.ng, partner with them on our platform. Right now, we have over 30 partners on our platform, but we grouped the services together because we know what the user wants. You, want, you either want express shipping that's quite, quite pricey, but it's very fast, or you want standard shipping, not that expensive, it takes a little bit more time to deliver, or you want to ship cargo. Import or export the cargo, your goods, the easiest way to ship cargo across Africa. We focus on technology, technology, customer service, custom resolution, issue resolution, and processing. These components of the entire chain are different. And one of the biggest issues that people ha have, and that's why it's so difficult, is because a logistics company, typical logistics company today, is trying to do everything, trying to do sales, marketing, customer support. It can't work that way. You're, you're delivering a package alone. It's so challenging. It's very important that you focus on just that, right? So we're a shipping platform. We aggregate logistics companies. I don't like to say Uber for logistics or Uber for shipping, but Uber for shipping is the best way that people can understand it, right? We provide technology. We coordinate. We get the customers. They use our platform. They can see prices. They can view. They can get quotes. They can interact with different courier platforms and courier, courier companies on that platform. And then we complete the deliveries for them. We provide the platform. All you need to do is tell us where you are and what you're shipping. And then we'll send someone to go pick your package up, process it for you in one of our centers, and then send it to where it needs to be. So that in the entire chain is managed on one platform. We're not doing the deliveries. We don't own any bikes. We don't own any vans. We don't own planes. We just do the technology and we do customer support and issue resolution. And that's a very big part of the entire experience for everyone. Everyone that tells you they had a bad experience shipping, had a bad experience along these lines, right? Along communication, customer support, communication, customs clearance, issue resolution, uh, requesting for a, a pickup. These are where the pain points are for the user. So we are customer centric and we're tech focused. We're a platform for shipping. We're not a logistics company. So that's, so when you put it that way, we actually don't have any competition in the African market. So the two biggest challenges, the first one would definitely be managing a team. Uh, that's, I mean, if you're in Nigeria, that's probably your biggest challenge. Uh, managing a team. Uh, the second one would be managing all those partners. Because like I said, there's business development involved. You have to manage them. You have to meet with them. You have to find out what challenges are they having, right? So on two ends, we have customers. Our first set of customers are our merchants that pay us every day. Second set of customers are our partners that, that, that work on our platform. So managing those two relationships is, those are the biggest problems we have. Um, because again, remember, these are very sophisticated businesses that we're working with. They have their own policies. 
they have their own processes. So trying to merge and integrate and have, have this biotic relationship with them is extremely challenging in this climate. Uh, but that's where we come in. That's the value that we provide, right? So we go and we make them, we face that challenge head on. So initially when we started, we bootstrapped. Bootstrapping is starting with whichever money you can find. Uh, so we started really started small, bootstrapped for eight months. Uh, and then early this year, we raised a small angel round of investments from just a bunch of angel investors uh, to get us to our next set of milestones. Um, so I'll say, I mean, relationship with investors, we, we, so we typically don't collect money from people that, that we don't like, that we don't have good vibes, good, we don't feel the connection. And I'll tell you why. Because it's the same thing with working with people. Like, why, why do that? I mean, there's so many examples of people that are collecting money from an investor just because they wanted to collect money. And then it turned out not well. Remember, every investor you're bringing on board has to sign off on every major strategic decision you're going to make five years from now, right? People have lost their businesses because they collected money from some strange, random person. So again, remember, you're, you're bringing in a spirit animal into the fold. It's not just collecting the money and spending the money, but what's the, what's the value? Does this person understand the vision? What are the values of this individual? There are a lot of people that have money in Lagos, uh, to be honest with you. When we were looking for investors for our angel round early this year, we reached out within our network and talked to a bunch of people. And then we had some calls and then a bunch of people decided to invest. Um, but at some point, we, we, when we spoke to one particular investor, we got advice from another angel that we shouldn't take money from this guy right and he was bringing in a decent amount of, of money um, but we got advice don't take money from these people right and we did a little bit of research and realized that oh okay that's true <laughs> these guys are gorillas you know they are they are very aggressive they don't understand how startups work they invest today and they're asking for profit tomorrow and, and that doesn't work it is a long play long-term play so finding that connect there has to be that match between you and the investor as well they have to be investors that invest in startups that understand the way startups work that are willing to go through the long journey with you um, because an investor can make or break a business. So, so we're, actually, we're actually very cautious about the people who collect money from. Our vision is to create access to global trade for African merchants. Um, we want to make it possible for you to ship anything anywhere. And we want to be the easiest way for you to ship cargo from Nigeria across the world and import anything from anywhere in the world into Nigeria. Um, that's it ship anything anywhere the easiest right that's literally our vision so um, when you put it that way it's like okay when i want to send something i know where to go if i want to buy furniture on ikea i'll buy it and ship it in with top ship at the best prices right so that's really what we are that's what we're building right um we can't say we're flex port for africa we can't say we're this for africa no we are bigger than that our vision is actually bigger than that we are a, and it's where we're really trying to revolutionize an entire industry uh, by creating the first platform that does what we do. So we want to be the dominant shipping partner for all merchants in Africa. That's it.